In this lesson, students engage with activities that consider the relationship between race, ethnicity, and ancestry. They'll learn about the unique properties of mitochondrial DNA and explore how PCR helps unlock the genetic information key to understanding our past. Students will use online tools to analyze raw DNA sequences to identify an individual's haplogroup. Lastly, they'll return to the question posed at the beginning of the project and based on their learning throughout, provide evidence for their answer to the question, does your DNA tell you your race, ancestry, or both? We've broken down the lesson into four parts that roughly translate to three to five weeks of remote learning, but you can determine the pace that is most appropriate for your class. In part one, we explore the differences between race and ancestry and how they may or may not be connected to our DNA. In this lesson, we will be talking explicitly about race, including how people in general are assigned race based primarily by their outward appearance. In some ways, teens are often more comfortable talking about race than adults, but can do so in ways that are hurtful and indelicate. It's important to prepare for and establish expectations for a safe and productive conversation that includes race. Of course, you can lean on your own professional experience here, but we've also included these resources to help in your preparation. Many teachers already have their own classroom norms. We've included two very basic ones here that may help you get started. Remote learning can provide some challenges with appropriate responses from students, from insensitive chat boxes to breakout rooms that can be difficult to monitor. You'll want to consider if these features should be used based on the nature of what's being discussed. This may work best as a whole class experience. Throughout the lessons, students record their observations and answers to questions that are embedded in their student activity guide or in the lesson slides. Here, after considering race, ethnicity, and ancestry, students do an activity that often reveals how assigning race and ancestry is not often as straightforward as it may seem. Next, students consider some data related to genetics and watch short videos from the PBS series Race, The Power of Illusion, before recording some important takeaways from scientific evidence related to race and ancestry. In part two, we share the unique features of mitochondrial DNA that reveal so much about our human ancestry. You can differentiate this content as makes sense for your students. Single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, are introduced, as is how they can be used as time and date stamps to establish haplogroups as a means of tracking the migration of our deep maternal ancestors. In part three, students learn about the lab procedures necessary to study mitochondrial DNA. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is explored through readings, short videos, and activities. A brief overview of DNA sequencing is also included. In the final piece of part three, students are asked to make a prediction using their new understanding of haplotypes in this map about the haplogroups of individuals who have self-identified their own race and ethnicity. In part four, students watch a short screencast showing them how to use the online tool SnapGene to analyze the raw sequence data from the PCR samples of the individuals whom they made predictions on in part three. Ultimately, they will get to see whether they were able to predict the correct haplogroup but also get to explore just how much variation exists among our ancestors, even among people lumped into categories called races. Lastly, they'll return to the question posed at the beginning of the project, and based on their learning, construct an explanation for their answer to the question, does your DNA tell you your race, ancestry, or both? Please visit Baybeck.org to find curricular resources for this lesson and to learn more about available lessons for your classroom.